Hey, what's up, everyone? This is To Live Live podcast number four. Uh, we've gone most of 2020 without a podcast. So we'll, uh, I think we'll mainly catch up on what, what good has happened this year in music and some releases. Uh, I'm your general host and or other person talking. Uh, let's go around. Uh, who else is here? Uh, what's up? My name's Eli. Um, I'm the drummer of Tired of Everything. And uh, I really like hardcore. You know, that's all I have to say. <laughs> all right, I'm AJ. I'm the drummer for uh, Fading Signal and Soul to Keep. And I also just really like music. I'm Dylan. Uh, I don't play in any bands, but I did used to DJ over at uh, at a WKNC about a year ago or so. And uh, me and me and AJ here had some quite fun times on there. And I also hardcore. I love it. <laughs> it is the best, you know. It's superior to every other type of music, for sure. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I sort of messed up and I listened to the end of the year-ish Axe to Grind and they were talking about their predictions for uh, moving through COVID might lead to maybe happier music as, as y'all just declared your love for hardcore. Uh, and I know y'all like angry or hardcore. Do you think that more positive hardcore is going to come out of uh, being in a pandemic? I, uh, you I mean, go, I think one step closer is one step closer's album. Hopefully, is coming out next year. That should be some pretty amazing, positive stuff. At least, yeah, I get Definitely. I can see it go both ways. Just from like personally, like you know, there's just a whole lot of shit going on, and without shows and that kind of thing, there's not really an outlet for people. So I think people are gonna probably put or on some end of the spectrum, some people are probably going to put more aggression in because that's the only outlet mm -hmm. they have right now. But on the other hand, I can see people uh, trying to make positive music to try and stay positive. Um, I could, uh, <clears throat> are you going to be like, yeah. Word. Uh, so, uh, well, I, um, I like both sides of the spectrum. I, I like a lot of youth crew and stuff. So I definitely like a good, you know, positive message. Sometimes I need that, but I'm also kind of angry sometimes. So I definitely, uh, I definitely like angry lyrics and hardcore. It gets me uh, pretty hyped up, but um, I, I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit of positivity in the next couple of years in hardcore personally. Um, mm -hmm. I uh, I like some of the heavier stuff that's been happening lately, but you know, you all know me, and I like faster stuff. Uh, you know, I like that band Restraining Order a lot, and I feel like they're kind of leading like a new wave of that kind of style coming back, and I think that'd be mm -hmm. cool. But uh, I agree with you, AJ, as well. You know, I can see it, there's a lot of shit going on in this world. So, yeah. I mean, just think about in the past since, uh, what, like March or April, like how many songs there have been about killing cops and yeah. all that shit. Mm -hmm. that, that spy record that Will put which is, out. Which is awesome. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the fucking spy record that Will put out is a whole EP dedicated to how much cops suck. So yeah, yeah. that's on my uh, <laughs> that's on my list this year. That that was really good. Fuck yeah, dude! I listened to that shit the other day too. It's it's a good one. <clears throat> but yeah, what were you gonna say? I feel Dylan? like I feel like um recorded music, like studio albums and stuff, might be happier. But I feel like when slash if shows come back at all in twenty twenty, I feel like shows at least for like a couple months are going to be insane. Like, like Definitely. super aggressive, super, super energetic. Cause you know, everyone's been super cooped up and everything. I mean, yeah. I know I want to fucking go to a show. Me too. Personally, I hope that, um, 
I don't know. The last show I went to was uh, Mutually Assured Destruction, Restraining Order, Magnitude, and Terror played last. And I've never been like a huge Terror fan musically, but they were pretty freaking energetic live and pretty fun. Where was that? And I, I was at Local 506. But oh, really? um, yeah, but Scott Vogel, the singer, obviously, um, you know, he he basically commanded the crowd to move forward and kind of end the little horseshoe thing. And usually, mm -hmm. usually I find that to be a little corny when singers do it, but he just, he got it. He, since he's Scott Vogel, he, you know, everyone listened to him and people were fucking right. stage diving and singing along. And, and then there was a pit right behind that. Right. I don't know. I miss that shit. Like, oh, yeah. I, I like fucking, I don't know, man. I, I like it to be a little more uh, packed up, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I think that I'm hoping that regardless of whether the subject material is positive or negative per se, I, I, I hope that when shows and stuff come back that people kind of just have fun and not try I to agree. be so serious mm -hmm. about shit all the time and take themselves so seriously like i think people just need to learn to appreciate that uh just having fun again me too mm -hmm. i For agree sure. and also let people mosh how they want to mosh you know <laughs> <laughs> if one person wants to spin kick that's fine but if one kid wants to like run around in circles don't make fun of him because I don't know. That shit's lame. It's impossible <laughs> to not look goofy when you mosh, no matter yeah, what. Yeah, dude, yeah. exactly. We all, we all have a point of looking silly, you know? So fucking embrace that shit and be like, yo, that kid is fucking cool that's <laughs> fucking running in circles, right. going crazy, you know? Yeah, the end. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So uh, you guys want to talk about some albums or something? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I don't even know where to start, though. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, um, let me pull up my list. How about we, we just, like, jump all the way in and go for your top favorite best album of the year? Yeah, I have one. I, I know my, like, favorite for sure, but uh... – yeah. AJ, you got one? I, th I think so. Do it, man. I feel like I have a favorite, but I don't have a list. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'll create I, one. I mean, I'm <laughs> still going through my list, but so, I mean, definitely the one that I've listened to the most this year is the uh, Cauldron uh, Last Word oh, okay. Scream from uh, Last Word Scream from Behind God's Muzzle. It's kind of... Uh, more of like a metalcore revival thing, but I've just really been feeling that EP this year. It's so good. I've been listening to it over and over and over again. Hell yeah. Um, I, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm sort of familiar with it and uh, I enjoy it as well. They're good. Very heavy. Definitely. Um, yeah, I kind of I like a lot of like 90s metalcore, but I'm not super versed in the newer bands, but they were one that stuck out to me. So I feel that. Just a really solid. I think, um, hmm. Oh, what were you saying? Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to talk about uh, my top album because it was kind yeah. of a, a toss up for me. But uh, both. Um, I think I'm going to have to give the slight edge to uh, Pain of Truth, their EP from this year. I've listened to that thing over and over and over. They're a um, group out of somewhere somewhere in the Northeast. I'm not uh, – I, I know it's like Florida. members of – Florida? No, I'm pretty sure it's uh, – I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, it could be. I know, it's, I know it's East Coast. And I think it's got, like, members of groups from up north and stuff like that. Okay. But uh, their EP is just interrupt. like <laughs> – Oh, it's all good. It's all good, yeah. Uh, but just, like, real, just sort of, like, fun, fun hardcore, I'd say. A lot of, like, 
fucking sort of goofy mosh calls, but it works. And just like really energetic. And it's just like, they've got like three different vocalists sometimes. And it's just like the energy and it just sort of makes me miss shows even more. But I mean, it's just top to bottom, really good EP, probably like five songs or so. But um, I'd say that probably was in a toss up for Gridiron. I think uh, AJ and Eli, you both, you both. Fucked up yeah, that I, forgot, I sure. forgot to put that one on my list, but that's definitely going on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it's that. Got a, the drummer is the vocalist from uh, Year of the Knife, and then the guitarist is, I think, from Neverending Game. But yeah, both of those, uh, Gridiron, I think they're both self-titled. Or, or no, Gridiron is loyalty at all costs. That's the name of the EP. But both <laughs> of those, I think, are in a, in a tie, honestly, for my top album of the year. And both of those were bands that have formed post-quarantine. So it makes you think like uh sort of like what those shows will be like when shows come back like you know first a band that's had an ep out for a year and a half like playing a show for the first time yeah i think that's the other thing about quarantine is you're seeing all these like little like side projects pop up Mm because there's no they people just have time i mean i'm here for it i love it like there's so much good stuff coming out right now Mm -hmm. yeah i agree um like for such a shitty year, it's been pretty good for, uh, you know, music, you know, maybe um, not the music up? industry, but yeah, yeah. musical releases definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, like for artists and stuff, like I know Bandcamp's been doing like every Friday, like they like like taking no fees, right, or something like that. <clears throat> yeah, I like think they've so. been doing it every every Friday, I think, since quarantine started, basically. Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. Close to that. What, um, what I think is interesting is I think major labels have told the bigger bands to hold off on their actual releases. So I would think that there's going to be a backlog of bigger stuff coming out after the pandemic's over. But th- what's great about now is I would think that's going to let the smaller band shine that they can Hey, I'm a studio band because we're in quarantine, but I've got these amazing songs and it, it'll make, I think it'll make smaller stuff come out of the woodworks and shine and establish themselves, which I love. I mean, I'm always, I run a label because I like the smaller stuff, the raw stuff, the bands that weren't going to get a chance anywhere. So I, I like the mm-hmm. thought of this mall people i mean the the fresher stuff coming up and bubbling out oh yeah and um just also with like all the you know people are talking about how right now is probably the best time to ever be in a pandemic just because of all of the technology that we have and that goes for music too because now you can you know i'm pretty like almost everything on like a lot of the stuff we've been talking about is all these people from different bands coming together and and you get to see different people work with each other that all do really good stuff individually and see them come together and make even better stuff. I mean, I've I've seen people's uh, COVID projects where they just say, like I I looked up that SWAT uh, demo earlier and it says instruments recorded on iPhones. Like it's not even, there's a huge, (laughs) there's not a huge barrier to entry. Like if you can get someone to mix it down, okay. Using the, I mean, we were were talking about doing that with fading signal on an iPhone, (laughs) maybe a little bit tongue in cheek, but (laughs) if they did it, why can't, I mean, we can, I mean, Frank Ocean did it. (laughs) People um, film movies on iPhones now. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. The but, world we uh, live in. Shout out to Android, too. <laughs> <laughs> My phone. <laughs> um, so, uh, first off, Dylan, the band I was thinking of was Point of Contact. They're the ones from Florida. Oh, yeah. All these oh, bands. Yeah. I mean, there's too many bands. shit from Florida. Yeah, there's so many bands where it's like something of something, so I get them mm-hmm. mixed up. But uh, tired, tired of everything. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> shit! I didn't even think about that. But uh, fucking, so check it out. All right, this this is funny because I was talking about how hardcore is better than 
every other type of music, but my favorite album this year isn't necessarily a hardcore album. It's, uh, it's, what, I gotta check the name, the fucking album. Uh, I didn't write the name. It's Narrowhead 12th House Rock LP. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's on Run, Run for Cover Records. Um, I think I listen to that one. Yeah, yeah my my sick ass my sick ass girlfriend Liz showed it showed this band to me. Um, but uh, all right, <laughs> I like that band, but I get them confused with Fiddlehead. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Aren't um, they on the same label, or am I making that up? Yeah, they are actually. You're right. <laughs> oh shit! And they're both really sick. I like Fiddlehead a lot too. But yeah, okay, Narrowhead, check it out. They're on Run for Cover Records. Um, so if 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 you like if if you're in if you were into the band Super Heaven, you should definitely give them a listen. Um it's that same like nineties alt type deal, but it's uh they're a little less like on the nose than Super Heaven is. So they kinda incorporate some of their own stuff into the the nineties sound. Um but yeah, I guess, you know, to to me it sounds like a mix of like smashing pumpkins and and like deftones and then like a little bit of helmet um, yeah there was a, me and will were talking about another release um that's kind of in that same vein did you listen to the fleshwater demo fuck yeah dude that, that shit's sick. i'm really liking that kind of stuff that's coming out and i really love that's, that, that, one. that uh that fleshwater demo is is definitely on my list for sure yeah i um I, uh, fuck. I, um, that one's on my list as well. The Fleshwater demo. Um, but yeah, the Narrowhead fucking album is sick. It's really good. Everyone that's fucking listening to this should go listen to Narrowhead. Um, yeah. The only reason I picked that band is Jay from Sidetrack posted, uh, He's a staunch uh, CD lover, which is strange in this day and age. But he made fun yeah. of all the people who had to pay $28 for the double LP versus the, like, $10 for the CD. Yo. <laughs> like, I don't even know what this band is. So I checked it out. I'm like, okay, I like this. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Well, yeah. Um, Jay is funny as shit and sidetracked rules. Um, uh, yeah, but... Uh, yeah, man. I'm glad you're into it, Will. I was uh, curious what you would think of it, because I thought it would it would probably be in your lane a bit, you know? I'm surprisingly, like, people don't assume that I only listen to one kind of music, and it's blast beat 20-second songs, but <laughs> I, 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 when I get bored, I go on these, like, real deep dives, and honestly, YouTube has made it really easy nowadays. I used to have to, like, soul seek into people's like hey this person <laughs> likes this band what else do they have i've never heard of this so i'm downloading it but yeah yeah i go on these deep dives like one summer i just went into looking up like tokyo shoegaze like bands and found like <laughs> a dozen really good bands um uh, I yeah. looked up my spotify rap that everyone's crapping on on facebook that you shouldn't support spotify but most of uh, my that's, stuff is that's that's why i'm not on facebook <laughs> i have no idea about any of that and it feels great yeah but like my like 40th like top listen song is finally like gag and stuff like that but oh, okay everything cool ab everything above it's like gothy wispy stuff so i 2020 i haven't been listening to a lot of hardcore but i i like I like to mix it up. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I um, Same. I my, this year. Thing, I, sorry, you go, AJ. I was just gonna say my thing is usually the music that I listen to that's not hardcore is sixty plus years old. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're on that country over here. shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I've also I mean, gotten into. Talk? Uh, I've also gotten into a lot of goth shit this year, like Drab Majesty. I don't know if that's goth, 
but it's like synthy, you know? So Gotham Drab Jason. Majesty and uh, fucking Cold Cave. Shout out to those groups. They're really good. I feel yeah, like my, uh, the new Soft Kill is on my list as well. Uh, I need to check mm-hmm. them out still. Yeah, yeah they just... I don't, I don't know when it came out, but I just, like, found out about it, and it's, it's so good. I need to oh, listen yeah. to all these albums y'all are talking about, because I've been <laughs> sort of <laughs> sleeping on a lot of them. I mean, the, the closest thing I can think of that I listened to this year is, like, the new Nothing record, which, I mean, is really good. Very uh, melancholy, like, all of nothing stuff, you know, but it's some, like, good, yeah. typical, typical shoegaze, you know. But I'm going to check out all this other, all this other good stuff. Definitely. That thing getting like getting shoehorned into one genre is uh like uh just sort of how you get stuck in a rut, I feel. Yeah, I, I try to avoid it, but it's hard to keep up with anything other than what I'm already mm-hmm. keeping up with. Yeah. Well, like I feel Very like true. I I identify a certain way with music and that's what people see me as, but that's not like mm-hmm. I feel like uh I saw a really like a while ago I saw a really disappointing statistic that said that people listen to the same music after the age of like 22, they listen to the same music they've always listened to going forwards. Mm -hmm. So like going into like being 20 or 36 and about 37, like I just think it's important to look at music as art and like you want to keep expanding your knowledge and getting into different stuff. Like I, I like listening to stuff from like Sun Ra to like, like gothy stuff like Ritual Howls and like. Oh yeah. I honestly listen to a lot of John Mouse and Dead Prez like most of the time. Like there's mm-hmm. some things that I like bump all the time, and then I add stuff yeah. to their repertoire. I've been uh, oh shit getting into a lot of. Uh, I've been listening to surf rock lately for some reason. I've been on a kick. That's sick. Like oh, proto yeah. pro metal. Yeah, and then uh, a lot of like new wave type stuff. Yeah, like just uh, older shit. I've been I've been finding that a lot of the stuff that I'm discovering nowadays that I'm like really enjoying is like way older stuff. But that's uh, I mean it's also I'm not really keeping track of what's coming out until I've heard it or you know. I feel like uh, I've been listening to older stuff too, like a. Uh, like, oh, well, like, I remember when I was younger because I was into punk and stuff. I'd always be like, oh, fuck all fuck this yeah. electronic music, you know, and all that stuff. But now that as I've, as I've gotten older, I've listened to it, like stuff from the 80s. And I'm like, oh, this is actually a pretty good, pretty, pretty good. Maybe I shouldn't have been sleeping on it this long. Oh, yeah. Dude, uh, Will, you're talking about all this weird music. I one One style of music I've gotten into pretty hard this year is UK Garage which is like <laughs> garage yeah it's like fast uh like you know that kind of shit like crazy crazy drum shit uh super like you know gets you pumped up but it's got like crazy piano and like jazz samples over it and like super so soulful singing and shit i don't know it's cool man i like that shit <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was about to ask you if you mean like Dizzy Rascal and he's on the Wikipedia oh, page. I fucking love Dizzy Rascal, dude. <laughs> he, he's not really, he's not UK Garage. He's like grime, but sort of similar. Dude, D- Dizzy Rascal is the shit. <laughs> I actually saw an interview with him and he said he was in, influenced by 3 6 Mafia. So Hell pretty yeah. cool. Hell yeah. Pretty cool. Um, give me one sec. I'm going to put a hoodie on real quick. Do you, I know he stepped away, but do you all feel like you're consuming music differently during the pandemic or is this just an extension of where technology was going? Uh, I feel like I've definitely had more time, not only to listen to music, but also just to sort of seek new music out. So I feel like I've definitely been sort of, exploring more than I normally would have. But then again, I also listen to a lot of music in the car and I've been driving less. So I guess that sort of takes away with, from it in a way. But like overall, I think obviously the, the pandemic is, is awful and everything, but I think like, at least for me coming out of it, it's gonna, I'm gonna have listened to a lot more stuff and just sort of, I guess, like 
like heard more than I would have in any previous years, probably. Yeah, I yeah. think that, um, being in quarantine, especially like um, not being around my peers and my friends as much, I've felt a little bit more free to explore kind of music I've been curious about without kind of feeling judged for it. Not that I think that people are going to judge me for my music taste, but you know, you know how people are like, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, I think having some time to kind of like spend time by yourself and really like do the things that you really want to do has kind of opened the door for me to learn about a lot of new music that I wouldn't, maybe wouldn't have even considered trying to even listen to once before. That's that sick. I, that I really enjoy now. Hell yeah. Well, I know I know it's typical in hardcore and punk to sort of shut down like certain music like so maybe listening on your own you don't have someone saying hey like I know you were thinking about listening to this but like let me tell you it sucks and then you never check yeah. it out. Yeah. 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 Not as much I had, gatekeeping. Yeah, I, I had a lot of that <laughs> when I first was getting into punk and hardcore and Man, I missed out on a lot of bands that I love now, you know, that I wish mm -hmm. I could have like, shit, I could have seen a lot of bands that I just didn't go see because, you know, someone was like, oh, no, no, that sucks. You know, <laughs> we don't we don't listen to that here, mm -hmm. you know, which which is really lame. But uh, Will, do you have a fucking album of the year? Uh, I was sort of hoping no one was going to ask me on that and we could go past this. <laughs> oh, well, I could talk about it for first time. Well, <laughs> I could, dude, I have like an al a list of, I got a, a long list, so I, I got plenty to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I've got some stuff queued up in my browser of stuff that I like, but nothing like is like, this is an entire album that's the best like uh, right i can't think of a definitive album that was like the holy crap this is just that and i'm not trying to be rude like i like all this music you um, freaking music snob jeez the other problem is two two, re two albums i released i really like and dude talk about it man <laughs> rep your shit well i mean obviously the spy record like just came out with a lot like I did a lot of work to ship those out and there's a lot of interest. Yeah. Those songs like hit really hard. I like them a lot. They really do, man. And the I, Pest EP I think is a pretty solid release. And I was like, that was one of the things I was like, I heard the masters. I, I was working with the band and I was sort of like, Ooh, this is good. Like I'm excited about this. Um, what was that one you just said? Peace test. Oh, Peace oh, Test. Yeah, Fuck so yes, good. dude. I love that band. They should be on my fucking... I forgot to put them on my list. But uh, you know I'm a big Peace Test fan. Um, they're just awesome, man. Sorry, my phone keeps falling. But uh, they rule. They kind of got like a bit of a Think I Care vibe, which I really appreciate. Um, yeah, dude. I'm glad that you uh, helped put that out. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> like I said, I'm struggling to think of other things. Like I've got a bunch of tabs open, uh, uh, and I could. I mean, I'm sure we're going to talk about plenty of stuff we like this year. Um, yeah, uh, Matt actually turned me on to a couple of bands. Uh, actually, this might not have been Matt, but uh, Black Magnet on Twenty Bucks Spin. Uh, I wasn't very familiar, and I think the singer from uh, Tur. Uh, terminal nation uh oh, cool fuck yeah posted about it i'm like i don't know what this is i i feel like the r word doesn't look quite punk and i'm gonna hate it so i clicked on it and it's like like harsh industrial like metal and i'm like oh, okay this is great <laughs> what else uh matt told me about executioner's mask i think is that a band Excellent. I have not heard of that. Yes, that's a band. <laughs> I'm just Fuck yeah. I'm so bad with this stuff off the top of my head. This year has been a little bit crazy for me. So I've been 
I've been, I know most people are hyper focused, but I'm like sort of the opposite. I've just been like running around trying to get stuff done in time. Like as is sort of indicative on our lack of podcasts. So I'm, although I run a label, I feel like y'all are probably more knowledgeable about what happened in 2020 (laughs) and music because I've just been putting orders together and et cetera this year. Um, uh, I haven't listened to it a whole lot, but a lot of people have been talking about the uh, Rat Cage album. Oh uh, yeah, that that shit was pretty good. Um, that's like some fast hardcore. Will you'd you'd probably like that stuff. Have you heard it, Will? Uh, it sounds very familiar. It, it's yeah. the album art is kind of similar to that, like the Spy one and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I was into that one. Uh, I got one that, album that you'll really like, Eli. What's that? Have you heard the band Heavy Discipline? Yeah, yeah, that was a good one this year. It seems like some yeah good stuff right there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, dude, that shit's good. It just it's like it sounds just it's like Boston style eighties hardcore, you know? Yeah. It's oh, just, uh, by the way, um, I. Me, Eli, me and Will were talking about earlier. You had showed me both of these bands, but I had forgot that those, the End It and the um, Pummel EPs both came out this year. Nice, dude. Did I show you End It? I think you did, yeah. Fuck yeah. It was either That's you sick. or Jordan. Dude, yeah. I, um, I have both of those on my list as well. Um, so uh, End It. That's some, some good shit right there. Um, yeah, I really like that one. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're from Baltimore and, uh, I mean, it's kind of easy to like throw the trapped under ice, uh, like comparison on them, but, yeah. uh, I don't know. They just, to me, they, I don't know. They have the same energy that TUI did, but the vocalist sounds basically, he sounds a lot like this, like the vocalist from the band Absolution from New York. They're like a late 80s hardcore band. Fucking Mm -hmm. sick. Uh, It's the guitarist of Burn. Um, But yeah, they're just awesome. Uh, I'm glad that people are fucking with it. I also really like that album artwork with the the skateboarder smashing his skateboard into the cop car. (laughs) Um, I don't know. It just looked very like punk rock, you know. Oh yeah, cool. right, I'm. I'm gonna go to the. Uh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be back in a few minutes. Word up. Um. But yeah, and Pummel. Shout out to Pummel. I um. I forget the that's name Boston, of. Right? Yeah, they're from like somewhere in Massachusetts, but uh, I forget the name of the singer. But I was gonna book Pummel this year with Fading Signal and Tired of Everything. And then, of course, you know, <laughs> everything happened. But uh, I hope that I, in the future, get to book them because I really fucking like them. Also, uh, I feel like their drummer is an underrated drummer because he, he pulls out these little tricks in some of those songs that are just like, like, what the fuck was that? That's awesome, you know? Mm-hmm. So... Much respect to that guy. Well, now that I got two drummers here, uh, uh, I've started to take drum lessons with Fasia. Nice. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, I I haven't been practicing, so I'm not getting better, but <laughs> I see how to play drums and how I should. And I'm honestly, I've been trying to get my, like, I don't know if you all had trouble with getting your non-dominant mm-hmm. hand working the way it should, but. I'm still going down that path. Yeah, it takes a while. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know. Just keep practicing, <laughs> you know. Repetition. Yeah. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that my my brain is old, but I think it would be different <laughs> if I went down this path 10 years ago. My brain <laughs> I thought like video game brain would have me like hand-eye coordination, but it it doesn't quite work like that yeah <laughs> um yeah i got something we can all talk about the fucking buggy demo 
Oh yeah, that one, I, I put that one on my list uh, right before we started as well. Yeah, that shit is sick. Is that is um, that just the one guy? Yeah, it's one like the, it's the one one person from Gel and someone else on drums, but it's the this uh, it's the guitarist of Gel, um, okay. which is another sick band, Gel from uh, New Jersey. They're both from New Jersey, Gel and Buggy. But yeah, that that album rule or that demo rules. Um, my favorite song is the one where he's the one that's called "Like a Bug." Yeah, that shit is good. It's that's like one the of third... those albums that uh, I was talking earlier about, just like having fun. Like that whole that yeah uh, has such a fun vibe. Like it just makes me want to party. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Same here. It makes me want to just side to side and fucking shake my fist around. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Someone needs to start a positive party power violence band. <laughs> Instead of Remember, all this like heavy, deep stuff, have it be like fun. Dude, I would be down for that shit. That's why I like here. All right. Uh, that's why I like that band. These bastards who put out that fucking split with hard foul this year, which is also on my list. Um, these bastards I don't know if it's members of Plutocracy or not, but it sounds a lot like the band Plutocracy, and it fucking rules. It's like weird. It has weird ass high pitched vocals, and it's fast at times, and then really slow at times. It's just like straight up West Coast power violence. Like, just it's great, and it's not serious at all, which makes me fucking. I need that sometimes, you know. Yeah. Well, it looks like it's a member of Agents of Satan and a member of Slobber. Yeah, I've heard of Agents of Satan, but I don't know Slobber. Slobber <laughs> has a split with Spaz. Mm. Fuck yeah. That's what's up. Um, Hell yeah, hoodie gang in this bitch. Yeah, it's cold as fuck in my room. <laughs> yeah, dude, fuck that shit. Got it. Got to be cozy. Uh, exactly. Well, we talked. We talked about that die demo uh, after we started recording, right? Yeah, that was after. Uh, no, that was before we recorded. So we haven't talked about the die demo. Yeah, um, that was another one that I really liked. Uh, it's. I think it's just a two piece. I know it's uh, the drummer from Livid, and I don't. I'm not sure who the other guy is, but it, that's some really fun stuff. Um, I liked it a lot. It was a good release. Fuck yeah. I want to check that out. Yeah, I think it's pretty short. Um, Looks like it's three songs, maybe. Yeah. But it's really good. I was feeling it. Hell yeah. Um, Let me keep looking through my list here. Yeah, I was just looking at mine. AJ, I know you fuck with the Neckrod LP. Oh uh, yeah, uh, I didn't. I I think I skimmed through it, but I didn't sit down and listen to it all the way. But I think what I heard was was pretty good. Yeah, I've uh, that's that's on my list. Um, I really like that shit. Uh, I uh, they put out an album before called Blood Offerings, um, and I remember it getting a lot of hype, but I just didn't really pay attention to it, unfortunately. Um, but this new album, it's called Mortal. Uh, yeah, that's what it's called. Um, that shit is awesome. It's, uh, it's got, it's definitely got like heavy morbid angel influence in the guitars. He's like, is, uh, the guitarist just like shreds and d does the pem the tremolo picking really well, but it's also got like some good slamming parts that are just mm -hmm dumb and ignorant and awesome you know um, one thing in that vein that is on my list is that uh that fuming mouth ep that came out oh shit they yeah did, i haven't they did a little three song too um oh yeah it was really good yeah i haven't uh i still need to check that one out did dylan 
Am I disconnect. sharing? Oh, I'm, right now. I'm uh, still I'm still on the the phone, but my, for some reason my app closed again. Now it's trying to it says it's trying to connect again. Oh word. Yeah. Oh wait, no, my, I think my internet turned off again for some reason. Oh, well, that's and, okay. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be back in a second. Okay. Eli, did you peep the Realize LP? Uh, no, I haven't, but that's the industrial shit from the guy from Sex Prisoner. Yeah. It, it, yeah. The, the band sort of ended up rounding out with multiple people from Sex Prisoner. Nice. Uh, what are they called again? Realize. Ooh, I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it's, it's uh, unlike the one I mentioned earlier that the dude from Terminal Nation turned me on to. It's, it's, this is a little slower. It's less harsh, but it's 100% God flesh worship. Okay, yeah, I was going to mm-hmm. say. <laughs> yeah, that's sick. Um, God flesh rules and sex God prisoner rules. Amazing. Yeah, so yeah, that's what's up. It, didn't that come out on Relapse too? Yeah, I did their demo LP with the label from Europe, uh, and then Relapse did their new record. That's sick. Well, fuck yeah, good for them. That's yeah. awesome. It's good for me because people will come check out the demo next. <laughs> yeah, I, I was sitting on like uh, like maybe the last like seventy five copies, and then the announcements made people scoop them up pretty quickly. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. Fuck yeah. Well, they Uh, only played one show, and at the, like, I mean, I think it's different during COVID, but uh, sometimes project albums is a little bit harder to get out there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, All right, well, I'm going to look at my list. Um, I've been kind of avoiding bringing it up just because I think it's been kind of overhyped and stuff. But um, what did y'all think of the uh, the Gulch record? Maybe not necessarily overhyped, but people have been talking about it a lot. Yeah, for sure. Um, I really liked it. Yeah, yeah. I, I liked I, it I too. I liked it a lot too, for sure. They did that Susie uh, Sue and the Banshees cover too. That was tight. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, that was cool. Um, I, I definitely liked it. Uh, I, I haven't really gone back to it a whole lot since I've heard it, but um, I definitely liked it. Yeah, I don't know. They're a good band. I uh, I don't know. I think people that hate on them are kind of funny because, I don't know, it's just good hardcore guess, metal mm-hmm. like yeah. influenced Punky, I guess that's the other thing that I was saying with uh, like quarantine kind of removing some of the discri- distractions and stuff like that because mm-hmm. there was the whole thing with the, the hoodie or oh, whatever yeah. that, that FYA <laughs> yeah, earlier this that was year. Funny. Or did they do a skirt? That wasn't, even, that wasn't even the band though. That was yeah, the, the, but I'm, the I'm just saying I'm sure because of that people are going to think of the band a certain way or associate mm-hmm. them with a certain type of person or whatever. Which is kind of unfair to them, but it's just yeah. how people are. No, nah, well, they didn't put, they didn't make a sketchy hoodie. They, uh, they just printed this. It was like a Hello Kitty hoodie that said Gulch yeah. over it. It's a and rip. Anyways, they fucking brought it to FYA Fest, and people were upset because a bunch of kids got in line to get this hoodie and missed like three bands because the lines including so long oh yeah they missed gulch that's what it was they missed (laughs) missed gulch to buy the hoodie so the kids missed gulch to buy their little hoodie because and then flip it on depop for five hundred dollars yeah exactly so that's why people were upset will but um Uh and for the record gulch did print more of the hoodies to tr- to bring the value down and shit because they were mm-hmm. mad about that they stuff were like too. fuck that <laughs> um uh so yeah the drummer of gulch is the singer of drain and i really like that drain mm-hmm. record a lot um i know that one did that come out this year yeah it did and i that, that's oh, another yeah. one that's been talked about a lot but i don't care i think that shit's pretty sick 
Um, yeah, it they got pops a, off like it's good energetic shit. Yeah, and uh, it's another like fun album, you know. Mm-hmm. It's uh, I mean, it's just like carefree, just have fun, you know. I feel like a lot of California bands are more like about the fun, you know? Hell yeah. For sure. I I just thought of an album I really liked. Well, an EP is I'm not a big full of hell person, but I like that uh, health collaboration a lot because it sounds industrial. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That and I think on the same label that uh, Regional Justice Center uh single yeah that's that shit's good super sick and aj yeah, you hadn't heard that one you you'd only heard the uh justice trip collab yeah the regional jurdis center yeah i haven't listened to uh the the single yet but uh, i'm definitely gonna check that out yeah i just i like the song it's slower like they yeah. just packed a punch and do a four minute song and it's an interesting song lyrically you know it's about his like dad (laughs) his real i I listened to this fucking interview with him recently and uh yeah it's about his real dad that he didn't really know and uh i don't know i like that his i guess the he was saying in the interview that the song was kind of like supposed to be saying like this could have been me basically if he had grown up with that father and that's uh I don't know, that's just like a pretty real thing to to say, you know what I'm saying? So what? didn't he say that his dad got that just to get through like prison or something like like not even um, like... So on the interview I listened to he said that his his dad told him he got it to scare to scare Mexicans. So I don't know what the... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, cool song cool uh cool band um hold on a sec oh dude beyond pain that's on my list oh yeah did they uh, put something out this year yeah well i think technically they they put this this new four song thing out last year but then atomic action records uh picked it up and like put it out again or something or on record, I guess for them, like on a seven inch. So I counted it either way because it's fucking amazing. Yeah. That's a really good record. Yeah. It's like a four. Yeah. Yeah, It's like a four song EP. um, Fuck. I forgot what it's called. It's got like a long title, but, uh, Everyone should check out Beyond Pain. It's uh, it's like crazy heavy power violence type stuff with like some added like death metal influence in the riffs and then ridiculously heavy fucking breakdowns. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, that shit rules. I wanted to order a hoodie from them, but they were all out. <laughs> but uh, the singer was really nice and emailed me and... Uh, yeah, so shout out to them, man. Um, speaking of power violence, earlier me and Will were talking about the uh, the Zulu release that came out. Yeah, that shit's and, uh, pretty sick. Somebody said that it was the drummer from Dare or something like that. Yeah, I think I told you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I just watched their – they put out a music video – that was really, oh, really? Cool. yeah it's just them like beating the fuck out of a clan member and then shooting him in the head <laughs> nice. oh yeah i think i saw uh, sorry state posted that yeah. or something. <laughs> it's oh it's really pretty- sorry state posted that yeah it's are they like posted that they were posting about it i don't know if they like actually that's fucking it. sick no it's it's released on yeah. sorry state yeah it is oh hell yeah wait what yeah it's a uh, it's released on sorry state records zulu <laughs> yeah no, what the fuck? <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? I mean, no. that's sick. I'm just Good. like, yeah, <laughs> dude. He's never put anything heavy out like that. Yeah. I'm looking it up right now. 
That's fucking tight, dude. I saw his, I saw his newsletter, and I'm like, he's not allowed to steal my genre of releasing. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Only one person in North Carolina can release stuff like this. But I know, man. I'm cool. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's really sick, because I want, I want the punk crowd to fucking embrace hardcore as well like Embrace harder the groove and great and i don't know just harder stuff so that's cool um, it's annoying because people don't check out the other bands they're just like like in the future you might see a punk and they're like oh zulu i listen to power of violence this one band yeah yeah <laughs> oh yeah it's like the one reference they like won't venture past won't venture past like the the stuff that's not on sorry state or something like that yeah well, I feel like power violence is kind of like, State. yeah, I feel like power violence definitely kind of bridges the gap between like the sort of like, like the, like hardcore and then the sort of like the sort of faster stuff that Sorry State's really specialized in. I mean, he did yeah. that Torso LP. Oh uh, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's so true. good. Oh yeah. Is Torso still together? I know I saw them like a few years ago back at, uh, at King's. They seem like it. Yeah. Uh, Revelation did an EP for them. They seem like they're signed and I, I don't know i feel like they should write another lp at this point being on revelation yeah. because having an lp on revelation seems like it gets you credit for forever yeah mm -hmm. dude revelation I think that dream, um, is awesome is on there yeah it is yeah oh yeah um yeah what else do I have? Oh, the uh, there was that asshole parade uh, demo earlier this year. Oh, nice! I uh, I didn't know that came out to be honest, but that's awesome. Yeah, seven songs. It's uh, including a gang's cover. Oh, cool! Fuck yeah, that's sick. What label did it come out on? Uh... Or maybe did they put it out themselves? belladonna records and hmm. there's supposed to be an lp but i haven't heard anything new about that that's what's up um all right i'm gonna look at my list so, uh that that mind force lp i mean the ep came out this year yeah that one which was really good swinging uh, swords and chopping uh, lords swing yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that shit. That shit goes hard. Um, I'm wearing a Mind Force hoodie right now. Nice. It's uh, it's giving me some uh, like Judas Priest type vibes. Yeah, I like. I want. I, I liked uh, their LP pretty good, but they uh, they had that title song on the LP, Excalibur, and it has kind of the same like Iron Maiden sounding riffs or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I was hoping mm -hmm. that on their next thing, they would do more stuff that was more centered around that. Cause I really like that type of shit. I like the Iron Maiden mm -hmm. <laughs> riffs yeah. and it's sick, you know? So I'm glad they did that. It's definitely on my list. Um, there was a, dude, Will, this is, well, this is a faster record. Um, it's the Destruct LP that grave mistake records put it put out um and destruct is uh they're like uh fast like they kind of sound like a japanese like d beat style band huh. uh they're from richmond um and it's i think it's members of that other band enforced that's more like a crossover thrash band that's also really good but yeah the destruct lp it's super fucking fast uh it's just punk as shit, you know? Um, just the, the riffs are really fucking menacing and angry and just, they're great. And uh, it would be like the type of band, if you saw it live, like you'd just be in constant movement because you're just being pushed around by the fucking crowd that's packed in the basement. You know what I mean? So... Uh, mm -hmm gives me good memories and stuff yeah i remember seeing that that was like their first release in a long time and i checked it out i don't 
I don't think it hit super hard for me, but I'll have to give it a second chance. Yeah, I feel you. Um, My attention span this year is like, if it doesn't hit in the first, like, if it's got an intro, I'll go past the intro. If the first, like, bits of it don't hit, I'm like, yeah, I'll just listen to other music. I so feel I didn't that. Give it much of a chance. I feel that. Um, another one I want to shout out before I forget is the fucking higher power LP. Um, it's, uh, it was on Roadrunner records and they're from the UK. Um, and it's, it's another, they're like, they kind of have a groovy hardcore thing going. Um, but, uh, they throw in like these weird alternative nineties style elements it's kind of got like some glass jaw slash deftones type vibes. Um, yeah, I'm sure, you know, it's another one that like people probably know about, but I don't care. I listen to that shit a lot and it's really fucking good. So, and they were really good live. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to bring that up real quick. <laughs> Hell yeah. I can't think of, Many more things. Uh, I've been doing the 65 Dude, I... uh, mail order and I've been meaning to check out, like you just mentioned that these bastards, I've honestly not put it on. Uh, it's cool, man. I've heard good things about the healer EP. I've sold a ton of them. I just haven't put that on either. And then I probably, I know I've listened to the internal, the new internal rot stuff. I just haven't like uh, yeah. let it like sink in. Um, Will, did you put out that No Moss Last Laugh record in 2019? I did a tape, the, the tape version of that. Okay, well, I know that's from last year, but that shit is so fucking good. <laughs> that band is so good. I've listened to that a bunch this year as well, so just going to shout them out real quick. No Moss from fucking DC. Go check them out. Hell yeah. I'm sure most people that are versed with To Live a Lie probably fuck with No Moss already, but still, they rule. Well, heavy heavy music out of DC doesn't usually go wrong. Like, I can't think of many, like, yeah, like seriously. I spam kind of band. <laughs> I agree with you on that. Honestly, Richmond and DC, man, I love, I love their scenes, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, a lot I of good stuff. The Raleigh stuff's been getting out there. Like I always hear secondhand about like people posting about like Scarecrow and stuff. Oh really? Scarecrow's a solid oh, band. Yeah. Like them. That's what's up. I hope AJ they, didn't uh, um. Oh sorry, you go. Oh uh, AJ didn't the Nuclear Desolation get like in like Germany or something? They were like the top, like the second stream band or something. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they made like number eight on the metal charts in like Switzerland or some shit like that. Hell yeah. Huh. Yeah. Which is crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, for real. Better yeah. represent. Yeah, that's sick. You know, um, um, and as far as more local stuff, I guess there was, um, the Eyes Wide Shut demo. Um, some really good, just like metallic hardcore. Um, if you're into that with like, uh, dying fetus breakdowns. <laughs> and then, uh, what else? Uh, Visions of the End is uh, my buddy mm -hmm. Trey, who, used, who plays in Eyes Wide Shut. Um, he put out a uh, demo for his solo project called Visions of the End. That's more of like a, uh, uh, it's almost like a death metal, like death core y vibe, sort of, but. It's really good. I like it. Um, let's see. Who else from North Carolina? Uh, Vital Sense put out something. Um, oh, yeah. They're a newer band. Um, yeah, I like that one. In there. Uh, you guys put out your... Uh, <laughs> was that an EP or uh, was that an album? Uh, just an EP. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's y'all's best stuff so far, honestly. Thanks, dude. I do too. I mean, not to like, you know, blow myself, but uh, <laughs> I definitely, 
No, I, I mean, I like those songs a lot, you know? They're fucking... I, I don't know. I like the first song a lot. I want the new... I want the next stuff to be more in that vein. As well as the one Will wrote. Will wrote the third song on there. Oh. And that's probably... That, that one might be my favorite, honestly. But, uh... Also, we got to shout out the Fading Signal demo because that is actually on my list. And uh, <laughs> that shit is fire. Hey, I recorded Fucking... both of these. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Will did record both of these. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you got. Didn't Fading Signal only play like two shows or something before? Yeah. Yeah. Just a, yeah. Well, shit, man. God, dude, that first show that I got to see was insane <laughs> yeah it was, it was pretty fun people uh, went fucking crazy uh, uh oh man now i'm trying to remember the name of the venue that was at uh emerge r.i.p emerge yeah. oh damn emerge closed sucks. down yeah they closed down damn yeah that sucked well our dirty punk diy spot's gone this year so yeah, yeah. r.i.p the bunker too <laughs> damn r.i.p Forgot about that. I think I went through and un secret tagged them on YouTube, so they should be searchable now. I, I know they generally wanted to keep changing the name so no one knew where it was, but they don't even live there anymore. So, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the, it was a fun spot while it lasted. Yeah. You know, so shout out to uh, the people that lived there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, Appreciate them yeah. letting me book there as they are in different music and obviously it would keep them up at night. So that that's cool of them. Yeah, I know for real. I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't have been able to fucking do that shit. Like live there. I don't think I could do it. <laughs> like the idea of it is awesome, but actually doing it I don't think I'm built for that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard there was some different breed, some worry yeah. about the uh, the magnitude show being too uh, rowdy. Uh, <laughs> well, it oh, wasn't yeah, even but that. beforehand or afterhand. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Who cares? I don't even want. <laughs> it wasn't a member who lived there, so it it, it wasn't. It was a non-issue. And yeah, it was. It was. Uh, yeah, exactly. And it's funny because they didn't even start playing till midnight and nobody was there yeah and they were like uh we gotta work tomorrow we're only playing three songs (laughs) i mean that's not their fault but yeah yeah true um all right i got a album i want to talk about real quick it's um it's this band called retaliate from uh oxnard california and uh They've been around for a while. Um, the singer of this band is uh, his name is Zach Nelson. He he has a podcast called One Hundred Eighty Five One Hundred and Eighty Five Miles South. Uh, I just want to shout them out because that's like my favorite hardcore podcast at the moment. Um, it's uh, it's it's all like it's all about West Coast stuff basically. So. Like the reason I like it so much is because it goes into all these bands that I honestly never knew even existed. So it's kind of like, Oh shit, I get to, you know, there's still a world out there that I, that I don't know about. And that, that excites me. Um, And the retaliate album, it's really good. Uh, The lyrics are like, you can tell that the guy really put some thought into them. Uh, The music is sort of, it's definitely on the metallic side of hardcore, um, but there's still like plenty of fast parts. Uh, it's sort of, it's sort of like I guess the guitar is kind of like integrity, Clevo inspired. But uh, they have a couple songs with some blast beats, which I always appreciate. Um, and yeah, I don't know, man. I just uh, think that shit is tight. Came out on Indecision Records. Um, so yeah. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. I 
don't think I have a lot of more bands to even talk about. Like, like I said, I expected 2020 to be like blown up with ever all these like bigger touring bands having all this recorded material, but it seems like the labels want to hold back on the release until yeah. they tour. So it's it's been quiet. Um, for the bigger stuff. Yeah, for sure. Hold up, I got. I got, dude, I have so many on this fucking list, man. But, uh, doing? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, well, how's everyone for time? I know AJ, I assume you have work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm good right now, but I'm, I might be trying to wrap up in a little bit. Yeah. I can, uh, I can go, I can just shout these out really quick and then we can like wrap up because I kind of got to. I got to use the bathroom and I want to eat food. <laughs> but, uh, all right, hold on. Give me one sec. Sorry. All right. So, uh, there's the primitive blast animalistic EP. Um, this band is from Australia. It came out on triple B. Uh, it's like kind of reminds me of 86 mentality. Um, like fucking punk with a little bit of oi and then hard ass fucking, floor tom breakdowns that you can stomp around to um and then uh fucking oh mutually assured destruction fever dream 10 inch uh i know aj and dylan like this band but uh Mm -hmm. it's kind of like you know it's like hardcore mix it's kind of kind of like sort of life life of agony inspired like hardcore groovy hardcore mixed with some alternative stuff you know it's um it's ace from a uh, breakaway but on vocals yeah ace from breakaway and also shout out to his podcast as well form of passion mm-hmm. um that shit's really good i like that one a lot too uh he puts on for fucking richmond you know and like i said richmond has a sick ass steam but uh the next one i have is reserving dirt naps um, I think they're, they put out an EB, an EP called another disaster. Uh, they're from Memphis. Um, it's just like, it's older dudes doing fucking super heavy, angry, fucking hardcore really well. You know, like I, uh, I like heavier stuff, but sometimes it can kind of bore me, but these guys don't bore me at all. And I really like this newer shit a lot. Um, damn. All right. <laughs> Let's see. There's this band Reek Mines from the West Coast. It's like some crazy fast, like infest style punk shit. Will, you would fuck with them. Uh, they're really good. Reek Mines. I think uh, I can't, I don't know if I can, if you can find them on Spotify, but I'm pretty sure they're on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I like that one a lot. And uh, let's see. I was hoping the Pressure Packed LP came out this year, but it's 2019. Yeah, that one was sick, dude. That band, they're, they're awesome. Um, I got a couple more on here, but... Uh, the last one I'll, I'll, I'll end with is, uh, that band midnight, the, uh, like the black metal, like old school black metal type band or whatever. Uh, they kind of, I don't know. I don't know what to fucking compare them to, but they're fucking sick. It's like metal, like traditional metal sounding type shit. It's good as fuck. Um, it's fun. It's not very serious. They kind of sound like Motorhead at times as well. Um, I'm sure lots of people know who Midnight is. So if you know them, you basically know what to expect. It's more more of the same good shit. But yeah, that's uh, that's all I got for the most part. Hell yeah. Oh, I had one more. Um, if y'all know the band uh, Built Upon Frustration, um, I think that dude has a new band called Watcher. Um, and they nice. put out a couple things. They, I think, a couple singles and an EP this year. Um, so check that shit out. Hell yeah, Dylan! That's you got sick. any other uh, albums on your top list? Um, 
I was, I'm looking. I was uh that honestly that gold child. I really I really like that. Um, I like I feel like they didn't really compromise with their style. Like I if if I remember correctly, I feel like their earlier stuff was self released. So um and this stuff this is on closed casket. And I feel like closed casket really lets artists do what they want. But still, I was kind of worried that maybe they would like compromise their sound a little bit. But it still felt like really raw and everything. But um it still sounded really good and it was just like heavy but not it was just like something that i feel like everyone can can get into like when i was looking at um like people's on people's instagrams and stuff like their their spotify rap for the year people that i barely would think would have that like on there but have like a gold song or something like that so i think it's sort of that album is really maybe exposed people to sort of hardcore slash power violence that otherwise wouldn't have been exposed to it even if they did yeah. get the whole bad rap for the, the the stupid hoodie bullshit and all that. But um, Dude. besides yeah, that, I'm going to have to keep scrolling and figure out other albums that came out this year to talk about. What were you saying, Eli? I, I definitely agree with you. I feel like they have a little something for everybody, you know, because they have mm-hmm. a lot of, like, straight pogo punk parts that are tight. I don't know. <laughs> And they yeah, also true. have really they have really heavy breakdowns, and uh, I don't know. I I kind of feel like uh, um, I I want I hope that they kind of put more kids that are into like heavier hardcore onto bands like Spy and like Gag and stuff mm-hmm. like that because to me Gulch sounds like those bands, you know, but with like yeah. some extra with like added heavy breakdowns basically but it's it's like pogo yeah. punk you know it's cool yeah just the breakdown sort of change it up um i guess yeah. another album i i mean would you guys count compilation album because this year earlier this year um i don't recall the name of the record label i don't think they've ever really done anything like it but a uh, one scene unity i know eli you were texting us earlier about that age of apocalypse song which is, is badass yeah. but uh there's like it was just a ton of bands that really like, cause like, I mean, in the hardcore scene, you know, like albums, well, I guess EPs and whatnot are kind of few and far between. So it was nice to get all this new music at once. And I think I'm pretty sure the one scene unity is a, like um referencing like a call for unity, all those compilations back in the nineties of like right. various East coast, hardcore bands. But I'm pretty sure one scene unity is all, all East coast. And uh, yeah, it's like lots of bands on there. I had never heard of like the band youth collapse on there, their, their song uh, that, that shit went hard. I'd never heard of them. Probably wouldn't have sought them out or anything. But um, yeah, a lot of good stuff on there. The Hangman song on that, on that album is amazing as well. Nice. Yeah, I yeah. haven't heard of this. Yeah, it's, it's cool. got it's got like something for everyone. It's got like regular sort of just like like I know Restraining Order has a song on there, so sort of more just like right like back to basics type of hardcore. But then also like Morning from the UK, they've got a song on there. So it's really like it sort of dabbles in everything. So they've got something for everything, or something for everyone, rather. Well, to be a hater, I probably wouldn't have checked it out with this artwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I think I, I think the artwork is also throwing it back to that the old compilations. But yeah, yeah, they um they did do a really cool uh vinyl like colorway. It was a uh, it was like the black and orange splatter, like the the, the same colors oh, as the album cool. is. I would have caught, but uh, my record player's been out of commission for a while now. That sucks. Yeah, I like that they did that because, uh, I don't know, that's what I want to see more of, you know? I like seeing a compilation with a band like Restraining Order that's more, like, 80s-style fast hardcore, and then, you know, next to a fucking, like, basically, like, metalcore-type band, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, So, fuck yeah, dude. That's that's the way to do it, man. You know. Well, a good comp is awesome. So. I agree. I mean, yeah. It was it was pretty influential to me to listen to comps starting at like bad early like punkoramas to like right. it, it gets you your bearing where you're like either it's like you like ninety percent of this or you hate. 90% of this, but this one band really pulls you in one direction. Um, mm-hmm. When I was a kid, short music for short people was like mm-hmm. crucial, which I heard later was inspired by uh, uh, what were those slap of hand series that I should know off the top of my head? 
the super fast short ones. Um, Blurg or whatever. Yeah, the Blurg. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I remember Possessed to Skate was a big a comp I always really liked. Like when I was first getting into stuff, you know. Like there's like the cleanse the bacteria comp that. Oh yeah, that's a good one too. Like, eighties stuff. Yeah. Um, Thrasher skate comps. And then there's a fucking reality part, whatever is that what it's called? Yeah, there's there's yeah yeah four parts, but part four I want to say is modern. Yeah, part four was pretty good. Yeah, I like that shit. Uh, people seem to really like the second to live a lie comp I did, and I did get some stuff on there that's I do think resonates pretty hard. Like uh, I I flipped out when Low Threat Profile came out for obvious reasons, yeah. and I got that song with them with uh, uh, Joe from Infest singing on it instead of Andy Beatty. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. And then, uh, an exclusive Weekend Nachos track, which. Uh, yep. There was some light internet beef with me and inter- uh, Weekend Nachos that was a little silly uh, that I feel like getting that on there sort of squashed the beef there. Wait, what? <laughs> you oh, have to tell- beef's always nice. I'm trying to remember. Was it over that beef song beef. they have? <laughs> the SCAB yeah. or whatever? Yeah. So their label, when they were a brand new band, uh, the guy hit me up for trades, and I wasn't very good at uh, – being nice like instead of saying why i didn't want things i i wasn't good at being like nice and being like oh i'm busy (coughs) yeah yeah i can't i can't do every trade so i was like at the time i was like i don't know this band like i haven't really heard them their their name's a little weird and that (laughs) sort of like piped back to the band that i hated their name and i didn't (laughs) talk with them so there was like (laughs) I think they were in an interview, like making fun of me for saying that. And it was like, to me, it was innocent. I'm like, Hey, like, I appreciate you wanting to trade. I don't really like, yeah. I, I Honestly, need more. Dude, <laughs> sorry. No, I, just from the way that band has operated over the years, I doubt they were like, Oh, you know, like serious, like fuck that guy. You know, they were probably just joking back. And then you guys did a song together so you know what i mean yeah. I they mean, probably didn't fucking you know so well, yeah yeah we, we we squashed any thing happening there i think it just got sort of misconstrued in a game of telephone yeah i don't know i love weekend nachos so yeah. heavy. that was one of the first sort of heavy bands that i listened to back because i remember before I was in the hardcore, I would listen to like that, and then like older like Jabalba albums. I would be I would be so into that shit. <laughs> Still am. Hell yeah, fuck but, yeah, um, dude. I'm like sort of hearkening back to this is sort of off topic, but I was just interested in who was in Pain of Truth because I, I know I was talking about them earlier. It's actually the vocalist from or no, the guitarist from Hangman. They had the Tyler Mullen from Year of the Knife did guest vocals instead of the vocalist for King Nine, but the, I think one of the guitarists is from Billy Club Sandwich, which is real oh, good cool. pedigree right there. I think, come to think of it, they have actually, like he, he says a mosh call that's like, like slow with your hands, which is obviously a Billy Club Sandwich <laughs> song, but yeah. but um, I've thought of some other some other sort of, I, have, I thought of actually two more albums, but that'll put my albums of the year at six. Fuck yeah. Well. Do it. But um, one one of them I'm, I was thinking of was uh, I think I think AJ and Eli. I know you guys have probably listened to it. The Out for Justice uh, sector split. Yeah, like, that's on my list. Yeah, yeah Out I, for Justice. Like uh, they're from lie. New York. I'm, uh, I'm not like super into oh. that. That band. Oh yeah, Out for Justice. <laughs> they their production style is weird. It's like they like overproduce the shit out of it, but like purposely, and like the drums sort of almost clip when they're doing heavy stuff but uh one thing i really liked about that split was versus just doing having like a front half and a back half like they alternated it'd be an it would be an out for justice song then a sector song and uh, it's kind of yeah. like like out for justice is from new york and then sectors from chicago so it's almost like a a battle of the cities in a way <laughs> don't make that yeah. sound no, then, that's um, cool. the other I, I don't know why i didn't 
mentioned this earlier. Maybe someone else did while I was away or just didn't hear. But uh, Era of Terror. Or no, Three Knee Deep by Three Knee Deep. I think the album is this is self-titled, but that came out this year. And that album is real good. Uh, real, yeah, just self-titled, Three Knee Deep. But that album is, uh, obviously, Three Knee Deep has put out stuff before. It's, like, really heavy and stuff. But this one really saw uh, Dalton, the vocalist. He's also a producer. And he just sort of did his, he, like, really incorporated, like, hip-hop stuff well, really well into the album, like, samples before songs and stuff like that. But, like, old, like, kung fu samples. Not, not, not you know, just, like, a typical, like, serial killer type sample type thing. Which, I mean, those are awesome. But the, hearing the other side is sort of cool. Like, reminiscent of, like, Wu-Tang and stuff like that. Yeah. And then just like it's sort of like cold world vibes, but it, it's way heavier. So it's really it's yeah. really tough. For sure. Eli, did you ever mess with that band War Hungry? Uh yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> I like them all right. <laughs> I know you're not. Didn't they do a split? <laughs> they did a split with Bad Seed, right? Like back. Yeah, I think it was the same one. singer. I think it's the same oh, singer shit. of both. Well that's bands. that's a title fight, so Oh, nice. Damn. Um, well, fellas, I have to use the bathroom. So um, I'm going to wrap up. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's been two hours. That sure. sounds like a podcast. Damn, dude. Are but, you serious? Mm -hmm. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm glad. Let me, let me pose one quick thing. Uh, sure. I haven't even thought forwards. Do you, do you all have any 2021 stuff that you're – excited like have you heard of any bands that are putting stuff uh, together god's hate oh are they doing oh yeah stuff? they're in the studio they're Twitching in the studio, tongues right in the studio too nice um, um from if y'all know uh, i think bailey from uh shame spiral and he used to be in face wreck he's working on like a solo uh black metal thing that's oh, that's cool uh, really looking forward to that coming out oh yeah I think um, um, for me, or one of my like most hype releases for 2021 is definitely going to be that One Step Closer album because um, they released, I guess, technically two singles this year. One was a Turning Point cover, which was amazing. But the other song, uh, what is it? I think it's Lead to Gray or Fade to Gray, something like that. That song is just like almost a perfect song for me. And it's just really making me excited for what's going to be on that album. I think they might have been planning to release it this year, but you know, because of COVID obviously fucking everything up. I think it's just, like, it's going to be delayed until 21. I don't even know if they've announced a release date, but that's definitely one of my uh, most excited albums of next year. Um, I'm looking forward to a new Candy LP, a new Ikulu, oh, or a, a first Ikulu LP, whenever that, that'll Wait, come out. It, I'm pretty they, sure they're they writing that? stuff. Well, I, I, th I thought shit. I heard they were writing <laughs> stuff. I love a cool yeah. so that'll be Dude, me too. Tight. I think they're sick as shit. Um, mm -hmm. I want that, ba that band Fleshwater that me and AJ like. I want them to put out, like, more stuff because I really yeah. like that shit. Um, mm -hmm. I also heard that uh, – uh, Fuck, what's the – there's this band, uh, do you guys know the band Warfare? Uh, they're on Triple B, and it's the, it's I, I, the guy. I've seen their album art and stuff, but never listened. Yeah, well, it's like fast, fast, like 80s style hardcore, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of like youth crew-ish. Uh, it's, the, it's the guy, Sam, who runs Triple B. He's, it's like his little hmm. solo project band thing. But there, he said that, uh, I heard an interview with him, he said that they're going to be doing a split with restraining order that's supposed to come out next year. So I'd be oh, yeah. interested in hearing that for sure. I hope um, more people, cause it seems like there's been a lot of sort of, at least in hardcore, like a lot of super groups quote unquote this year. Uh, I hope that continues into 2021 with people just sort of, you know, fucking around in quarantine and sort of hitting yeah. up their friends that may not live in the same area, but be like, yo, let's start a group. Because, I mean, there's been a ton of new bands this year. So, like I was saying yo. earlier, I've never played a live show probably, but they're still going to be good as fuck. Yeah, I know. There's a bunch of bands that haven't even played. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dude, you, you know what band I'm looking forward to next year? Mm -hmm. Is fucking 
our band that's called At Risk, mm-hmm. and it's going to be fucking sick. <laughs> we yeah. got fucking AJ on drums and Dylan on guitar and me on vocals. So let's oh, hell yeah. Go. Mm-hmm. Mad Dog 2.0. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm, I'm returning to my vocals. My vocals. Mad yeah. Dog 2021. <laughs> hell yeah. Um, all right. Well, I got to use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all take it easy, man. This was fun. Yeah, you too, man. We all got to get together and jam sometime soon. Yeah, for sure. And now that we got the spot. Yeah, definitely. All right, rockers, I'm leaving. All right, peace out, Joe. Take care. See ya. Later. Well, I haven't hit the stop button yet, but uh, y'all got anything else? I don't know. I don't really have anything. Keep it rocking in the free world. (laughs) Do do the loot, do. Do. (laughs) Do, do. (laughs) (laughs) 